Is that all there is? We've got our Jordan blocks, we've got our different cases, our isolated eigenvalues, and then our real repeated eigenvalues, and then our complex conjugate pairs of eigenvalues, and then the other case that we're not going to talk about. Yeah, that's about it. And that's really all we need. Look, if you're given your Jordan matrix J, it's a block diagonal matrix, you've got all those Jordan blocks, then you can compute powers of this matrix, you can compute the exponential of this matrix, everything's great. Now the actual coordinate change that you have to do to get here, that can be a little bit messy. We're not going to talk about that either. What we are going to talk about is, so what? I mean, why are we going to all this trouble? Well, explicit solutions to linear systems are great. They're going to help us with nonlinear systems, and sometimes linear systems are going to be really useful to us. But in order to really be useful, we need a qualitative understanding of what is happening with linear systems. If you've got a linear system, continuous or discrete time, that's written in Jordan form, dx equals jx, or ex equals jx, then in this system, the origin is an equilibrium. It's usually the equilibrium, unless it's a totally degenerate system. And those Jordan blocks are giving you the explicit eigenspaces associated to eigenvalues. Everything, everything is eigenvalues. Now, why are we making such a big deal out of this? Well, in 1D or in 2D, we could draw pictures. We could see everything that was going on. But we can't do that in n dimensions. We need to think in terms of eigenvalues. It's a really useful exercise to think about the dynamics of a linear system in dimension higher than 2 and try to think about plotting the eigenvalues on the complex plane and thinking about how the behavior of the entire system really depends on those eigenvalues. When you've got that Jordan description where you can see the different blocks, how a complex conjugate pair leads to spiraling within a two-dimensional eigenspace, but how that propagates out to the rest of the system as well. How changing eigenvalues from unstable to stable and back again changes the behavior along individual eigenspaces, but how that influences the entire coupled system. You can spend a long time thinking about the relationship between all the different types of Jordan blocks we've looked at, where you have degenerate eigenvalues, where you have repeated eigenvalues, and how all of this comes together to make sense of what is happening in the full linear system. Having that Jordan block decomposition is extremely useful. But in order to fully understand what is happening, you need to be able to go back and forth between what's happening with eigenvalues and the full system.